Uh, hey, let's talk uh, grail knives and bucket lists, you know, that kind of thing. And I don't know if you know, but this is a Chavez knife. And it is a Re Redention 229 Kickstop Drop Point, full titanium stone wash, which checks some box for me, y'all some boxes and the reason it does is because you know i'm a lee williams fan and his uh patented uh back flipper the kickstop is something that i chase after well this chavez has that mechanism it's this flipper tab and so i mean it's just natural i had to get one i have several of these kickstop knives in from different manufacturers so i think he he teams up with different manufacturers and he provides his kickstop design flipper tab um there is another one the shirigorov with a kickstop that man there was one on ebay this last summer that oh man i was so tempted but I think it sold for like $2,000. So I'm not a $2,000 knife guy. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. Uh, but boy, was I tempted because, man, it's just, it was like one of those things. I'm looking at it. It's, it's, it's my holy grail. But I didn't get it. But I have been looking at these Chavez Kickstops versions, these 229s. And so I had an opportunity to get one at what I thought was a reasonable price. And hey, let's get let's get in this thing. And so I pulled the trigger on it. I mean, uh, there's another one. Oh, the action on this thing. There's another one, uh, the Wingman, that I'm looking at currently. That's listed. That. You know, I've made an offer on it, and we've kind of gone back and forth. And I think I can get it at a very reasonable price, but it's an older model. And I think I'd rather have the newer model, so I can't really justify spending the money that they're wanting for it for the older model. Anyway, so these Lee William Kickstop designs, and if you don't know, the flipper tab is a separate mechanism that because of the way that it that it works it provides additional torque when opening and so it really does kick the blade out with you know a a, a fair amount of torque and leverage and so man they just snap out with these with their flipper tabs and then because it's separate they rest in the back here they do not come out the bottom and so it makes for a clean proposition of a knife and uh so my first run in and if you look back in the archives on my videos is with kershaw he was working with kershaw uh many years ago and created um some kershaw knives that have a version of this they weren't called the kickstop back then um, his collaboration with Kershaw uh, used the same design. It's not the same design, but the same um, the same outcome. I think the design is a little bit different. I'm, I know it is. It's a little bit different, but same thing. It created a lever. Uh, that created quite the snappy action. And I have those Kershaws still in my collection, and I just love them. I've got some other kickstops as well, but this one's been on my list. So, I, man, come on. And I've got, a, I've got a big surprise at the end of this video about some other stuff that's coming up. But, hey, let's get in it. Let's check it in properly. I mean, this action, look at it. Come on. And with that kickstop design, man, that thing fires. So, and it, I'll, before I put the box up, it does come with 
a alternate pocket clip that doesn't have the skull. So if you don't like the skull, you can swap out for just a standard looking pocket clip. I think other than that, they're exactly the same clip, except for the skulls in one. Same length, so you're going to get the same, basically the same, I don't know, feeling pocket. This one does look a little narrower, so maybe a little narrower. Um, I mean, yeah, so you, you have an option there. Comes with the knife, so I'm going to put the box away. Let's get it checked in. Yeah, so I'm I'm happy. I mean, it did cost me a, a few a few greenbacks, but you know I have a few higher end nicer knives, and that's what I call this a higher end production knife. At the end of the day, it's still just a production knife. It's not a uh, it's not a custom by any means. It looks like those screws come in from the other side and attached to the scale but they're under the pocket clip so kind of hidden so kind of a cool design yeah they definitely run all the way through none of the hardware here is very tight everything has been pretty loose so far yeah I don't really see any lubrication in here so considering well there's lubrication on the detent ball but I don't really see any for the bearings. And surely there's a metal washer insert in there. Let's get a magnet and see if we can't get it to pop out of there. Yeah, there it is. Hardened metal. Metal insert there, but then everything else is titanium. The hardware is metal. The pocket clip's titanium. And uh, the steel on the blade is... Mm, I saw it. It's kind of hidden. There it is. The M390. Yeah. And then it's got the Chavez logo. And I believe these are made by Riat. Chinese knife manufacturer. But, oddly enough, a pretty darn good one. And there's uh, Lee Williams' design logo of the Kickstop. Yeah. Cool. Nice chunk of M390 there. I mean, that's a piece of steel for sure. And then here's the mechanism. And I will say, on first glance, it's quite a bit different than the old Kershaw version. And then pretty hefty little, I believe that would be like a lanyard pin to hold in a lanyard. I mean, for the most part, really clean in here and pretty dry. But yeah, this mechanism here is definitely different than the mechanism in the Kershaw. It's got a couple of little, hey, where'd it go? I felt it go under my ring. Come on, man. Did it get off the table? There's two little washers like this. I don't see it here, and it's not here. Oh, there it is. Come on, man. You're trying to hide from me. They go on the sides of this pin because they ride uh, on the titanium on both sides. Yeah. A little different mechanism, but I would say definitely more robust than the Kershaw version, and definitely um, simpler. Um, but way more robust. The one in the Kershaw was kind of, I don't know, I wouldn't call it robust. How about that? Yeah, well, let's wipe everything down and we'll put a little bit of lube to it and uh, reassemble it. This jimping on the back, combat jimping. I mean, that's that's legit stuff there. You want to take, take that to war for sure. Um, I thought I got it out of there, but I did not. I see you in there. Come on, man. There you are. Yeah, so 
I've been out of pocket for a minute. My uh, my little warrior daughter, my uh, now 16-year-old wrestler daughter, uh, recently turned 16, uh, had a national tournament out east, and so that's where I was. And uh, she fared well, but we definitely learned some things and uh, came up a little bit short of where we would have wanted to finish. But all in all, we finished four and two in quite possibly the second toughest uh, national junior girls tournament in the country behind... Uh, the toughest would be the World Team Trials out in Spokane, Washington in the spring. This would be the number two, and then, I don't know, maybe Fargo's the third toughest, that type of thing. So if you don't follow wrestling, all this is meaningless to you. But, uh, yeah, she's she's doing well. She's pretty accomplished. She's learning a lot, and uh, super proud of her, and, and uh, chasing her dreams, man. She wants to be... Uh, uh, potentially a world-class wrestler and definitely a national level wrestler and getting after it and it's I mean it's such a great story how she came to it you know she wanted to be a gymnast and and uh, she picked up a fear bug and uh, after really going far in gymnastics and having an incredibly bright future she couldn't go over backwards all of a sudden. And uh, so she stepped away from that. And then, I don't know, a few sports and things she tried later. She asked me if she could be the team manager for the high school wrestling team. And I was like, yeah, that's not really kind of what we have in mind. And I said, I'll tell you what. If you go to wrestling practice for a week and you don't want to wrestle... <coughs> Pardon me. Then you could be the the team. Hey, we're all cleaned up, so I'm going to put this thing back together. We'll get it lubed up and uh, keep this train moving forward. I'm trying to see, but I don't think this pin is captured in any way. I don't believe so. Um, but I told her, I said, if you... Mm, there's two pins, so I think maybe that's this one. Yeah, and then this one is this one. Yeah, 100%. So I said, hey, if you go to wrestling practice for a week, if you don't want to wrestle, then you could be the manager until spring, and then you're going to have to, I don't know, Try something else. You could do soccer or softball or something, but you gotta you gotta get involved in something. And I said, so go ask the coach if you can if you can try wrestling for one week, and then make a decision if you want to do it. Because I didn't want to disrespect the coach. You know, he might I don't know the coach might have thought that was silly and didn't want no part of it. But he said. He said, hey, uh, your dad's a pretty smart dude, and yeah, bring some tennis shoes tomorrow and wear some shorts and a t-shirt, and we'll, we'll start our wrestling practice and see if you like it. So she went to that first practice, came home, didn't say a word to me, hanging around the kitchen, getting ready for dinner, didn't say a word. Her face was all red, hair was messed up. I mean, she looked like she'd been in a fight. And finally I said, hey, so are you going to say anything? How'd, how'd practice go? And she got this grin on her face and she goes, yeah, you're right. I want to wrestle. And I was like, all right, well, there you go. And so the rest is kind of history, man. She has come a long way in a very short amount of time. Her natural athleticism has driven her forward and... Uh, her core strength from gymnastics, you know, all of that has lent, lent itself to her doing a lot really quickly. 
And so in three years, she's climbed her way. Uh, honestly, only two years of continual wrestling. And uh, she has climbed her way in the national rankings and uh, is currently number 10 in the country. So she's doing pretty well. So anyways, there's the story of my wrestler. But I only say that because I, I just recently got back uh, from quite a long trip. 17-hour drive each way. Oof. It was a lot, man. I don't road travel like I used to, for whatever that's worth. I mean, I wonder if I should put just the tiniest little... Definitely on this detent track, I think I'm going to lube that ball. But I'm wondering about these washers right here. I think if I put it on that pin... It might work its way down to the other side of that. So I'm going to go with that. All right. I think we're ready to finalize reassembly here. Yeah, something like that. And I think I'm not going to make that tight. Because these screws here on this side need to go into that scale. Like so. Okay. And I can finish tighten those at any time. So I want to make sure everything's working properly before I go any further. Yeah, got quite a bit of play there, so let's see if we can't resolve that. Still quite a bit. Oh, there we go. Yeah, we were quite a ways out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, money. Okay. Uh, let's get these tight. Let's check that action again. Centered really well. I mean... Whew, so well built. I mean, I've got my hands on a few React knives and I'm thinking my comment would be pretty much across the board when it comes to production knives. Uh, they are legit. You know, we is definitely getting there. I mean, of course, they're dragging Civivi along with them. Uh, even the Senkut knives, I mean, are coming along pretty hard. Um, but, you know, I, I would, I would say that, you know, hey, one of the things that I think is primary with putting out a high level production knife is just post production quality control, QC control, you know, somebody reviewing the knife and then doing prototypes. You know, do a prototype and then look for bugs. And, and don't just leave it to your team. Like, send the prototype out and let, you know, let a few non-partial people, not the designer, but a, non, a couple of non-partial people take a look. Because, you know, their, their eye may catch something and you may not change it. But, you know, you have them write down, you know, the five best features of the knife and maybe the five things that concern them a little bit or that they have maybe not negative feedback but constructive criticism type stuff and uh and then see what they get and then you can say hey are these things worthy of us to change and if they are what's it going to take that kind of thing i mean 
Yeah, the action on this. Oof. Wow. So nice. Now this is a this is a really nice big. This is a large piece. Um the er, you know the 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 action on it is just I mean it's an A. I don't know that I'm going to say it's an A+. Plus. It's hard not to say a kick stop is an A+ plus though because of that kick stop. It just throws that blade out there. I mean, it's definitely, it's an A. Um, ergonomics. Nice, smooth, titanium, knockdown. I I am going to say that when I'm in hand, this corner is sharp. So much so that for me, these two corners, I'm probably going to knock them down. I'm going to take a, a, a small hand file to these. And very carefully knock these corners down. Um, yeah, because it, it's sharp in my hand. Right there. That corner, not the pocket clip, none of this. is. All this feels fine. But these corners and these corners are sharp. Now these, I don't know, they're, they're not really coming into play at all. But this corner right here, it's, I mean, it's not hot, but it's poking me. Yeah, 100%. So, I mean... I'm going to take my time and I'm going to file, I'm going to file these corners. I'm going to round these off just ever so slightly. And, uh, you know what? I'm actually going to show you. I'm going to, I'm going to just pause and do it. And then you'll be able to see what the end result was on that. So here we go. Okay. So in your world, it took no time in my world. I don't know, 20 minutes or so. And, uh, from there, can you tell any difference? How about there? So, from a three-foot test, you can't see it at all. If we get up tight on it, you'll see that I did knock down both corners. And so, I removed the pocket clip so that I could work freely here. And so, from this side, you can see, see how sharp this one is? And then all I did was slightly knock that down. So I used an aggressive file and got this corner. And then I got this corner. And then I came in with a finer metal file and cleaned it up. And then I hit it once with a fine little uh, needle diamond file. And so it's really smooth and that, har that harsh edge is gone from where it sits in my hand now. And so I don't even notice it. It's completely gone with just the tiniest little bit of work. Now, I don't know if I ever sold the knife or if I ever gave the knife away. I definitely would disclose and say, hey, the, the scales and the backspacer have been modified right here. That edge has been knocked down to take that sharpness out of it. Because this one's still sharp. It's pokey. But it doesn't come into play. But I can tell you now where whenever I grip this, this was bugging me. I mean, it was, it was, it was catching me right here and I could feel it. And I want this knife to be comfortable. I want it, I want it to melt into my hand a hundred percent. So now with the ergonomics, I, with this combat jimping, I mean, that's combat jimping y'all. I mean, that'll shred your thumb. Like if, if I ram this as hard as I could into a brick wall, my thumb's getting shredded a hundred percent. Um, there's enough of a finger swoop here for me to approach this knife from not so confident, confident, very confident. I'm, I'm right up towards a confident grip. It doesn't have a complete finger guard though. If it had a finger guard, I mean, the knife would be perfect, but of course, then I wouldn't have my kick stop because the kick stop <laughs> disappears if it had, and they make a model of this 229 that has a regular uh, flipper tab that whoop comes out bam it's a street version and it's quite a bit less money um, they also make one of these with a thumb stud so you can flip it out with a thumb stud but of course the thing that attracted me to the Chavez more than anything was this kickstop now I do like this knife I mean it's chunky it's bulky it's got girth and I mean the grip is confident enough 
that I'd say backup self-defense. I don't know that I'd want to carry this one for primary. I mean, yeah, see, this is too pokey to carry backwards like this um, in this form, but I could carry it uh, backwards like this. It's just not quite right like that. Um, so ultimately, this is a thumb forward, strong grip knife. Yeah. Um, I like it. Let's check that pocket clip. What's that? What's that about? It's not a lot of uh, play. I mean, the tension here, whoo, but it's got great gradual ramps both ways and a lot of room back here for my thick pockets. So let's see what's up. Yeah. I mean, the thick stuff goes right in there. No, no hesitation. Tremendous amount of grip. Like wherever you put this in your pocket, that's where you're going to find it when you need it. And no snags coming out. Just a lot of tension, which, you know, with this bulky of a knife, that's what you want. And here on standard jean size material, yeah, it's money. Uh, my back pocket, yeah, perfect. How about that little skull sticking out of my back pocket? Like, come on, man. That's legit, right? I dig it. Yeah, so the pocket clip's wonderful. I wasn't sure about that pocket clip, but it's it's absolutely wonderful. It's amazing. Great grip. Easy in and out. One-handed in and out of the pocket, for sure. How about safety? Whew, I was concerned. Because that is a valley right there. That's a Grand Canyon, man. And I'm getting a good portion of my finger jammed down in there. Um, but yeah, I can't touch that. So yay. And then what about the tip? Oh, that's another one, man. It just If you look here, it's so wide that I was like, oh, please don't catch my tip. But not get it. So the tip is good. The clip is great. And the back is safe. So... Absolutely can put this in my pocket and not worry about um, uh, cutting myself. It's safe in the pocket. It's easy to deploy in and out of the pocket. Excellent action. Top materials. I mean, yeah. Uh, I wonder if it's sharp. It's got a... Um, it's got a hollow ground blade for sure. I mean, I don't even really need to do this test, but... 100% it's got a hollow ground blade here and then it's got a flat grind here that has added stability to this tip strengthened it but let's see if it's sharp you know I wasn't sure because I have some high-end knives it's kind of interesting man I mean I buy obviously I kind of live in the the budget arena the bud to uh, budget to maybe mid-level budget you know, that 100 to $150 range, I can get up in there. Uh, but when you start talking these knives, I mean, some of these that I've gotten, the sharpness of them isn't, isn't near as good as some of my $70 knives. Yeah, and to be honest, this one's sharp, but, I mean, I'm definitely going to strop it. And, and possibly even profile it because it's not, I don't know, is the expectation that it should just be sharper because of the price? I mean, I think so. And it, I mean, you can see clearly it's sharp. I mean, it's taken on this thin paper. I just think it could be better. Um, but I'll, you know, it's sharp enough for the, for the check-in and we'll say it's good. Uh, I definitely fixed this. That worked out great. So really what's left? Price and availability and then the surprise. White Mountain Knives carries these. And they have one that's titanium, but it's got G10 scales. It's the one that I've seen they have in stock for $400. So with the discount code below, it puts you at about $360. Uh, eBay's got... I mean, eBay has several of these. Most of them are new, uh, around the four hundred dollar range. Um, but there's some there's some used ones in there and some others mixed in that I think you can get them sub four hundred, maybe in the 
you know, 350 to 375, 350 to 400 dollar range. So there's plenty out there if you're looking for one. And um, so what's the surprise? Well, so the surprise is I have another one of these, y'all. And it's not what you think. <laughs> like, I'd be like, uh oh, is he going to give one of these away? I mean, I'm going to definitely do some giveaways when we get to a thousand because at that point, I think out of the channel can start streaming a little bit of money towards me to help pay for some of this stuff. So I'm definitely going to do giveaways. I still haven't figured that out. It's like, I don't know, you finding out about me. I'm not very accomplished. I mean, that's not true, man, but. But I, I just haven't taken the time to figure out how to do giveaways. But I am going to do that. But I'm not giving away my Chavez. But I have another one in here. And I've got a little sneak preview. This one has been worked over by my man, Colin Finnegan. And so the review for this one is going to drop within a day or two of the review on the standard so now if you watch this to the end you know i'm gonna tease you a little bit you know that this one's coming look at this thing man i mean so so when i review this one y'all it's really going to be a review about you know this knife not about the chavez and about colin finnegan and what he's doing over there, um, he's got a Facebook channel, and he does custom anodization. And if you look at the sticker here, that's actually a Chavez in there. And it shows scalloping and anodizing and all this stuff truly represents his work. And so... There'll be links to his Facebook page and all that. And and so even a bigger surprise, I have four of these knives. Not this knife, but four different knives that Colin has gotten busy on. Two of them are mine um, and two of them are his. There's two in this bag that are his that I'm going to also feature on the channel. And... I believe he, he'll he take an offer on a couple of these. And then I also have a pretty cool one of these <laughs> that he has done up for me. And so this one's probably going to be the last one that I do the video on. But stay tuned because uh, Colin Finnegan and his custom cr crazy custom creations... We're going to get into some of that. I'm so excited for it. But uh, Chavez, Lee Williams, Kickstop. I mean, come on, man. A little, little modification here. But this thing is sick. I'm not, I don't have a lot of $400 knives, but I'm glad this is one of them. I appreciate you watching. Hey, and look for... Look for this pretty exciting thing coming, man. Pretty cool.